Hey everybody, so recently in our cyber community we decided to start doing like a, a weekly threat hunt, capture the flag, where people can win uh, a prize. There'll be like three winners every week. First place wins 125 US, second place is 75, and then third place is $50 US. And then we have some rules where like um, the same person can't win twice in the same month. So we just finished the first threat hunt slash capture the flag and, and people actually like uh, completed it much faster than I thought. So I just wanted to um, kind of go over the scenario, like the threat hunt scenario, like what it is, and then um, to actually, like after you win and find the flag, you have to write up a threat hunt report. So I'm gonna kind of uh, review the community members report that they wrote and then see if it's like actually accurate and, and makes sense and, and all that stuff. So, but before I get started, I, I have to kind of explain what the architecture looks like so it makes sense to people. So. Basically, everybody who's in the cyber range, we all use like the same environment. Um, we use the same cyber range. It's basically just one big uh, Azure subscription. And there's a whole bunch of different virtual machines from all the different students. Uh, we use the same virtual network. And then all the students will create a bunch of, bunch of virtual machines like in the same uh, Azure environment. And we have like uh, one EDR platform, which is Endpoint Detection and Response, which is Defender for Endpoint. And we also have um, a single SIM as well, like Security Information Event Management System. It's, it's essentially just a workplace uh, and it's like a normal environment with a SOC and there's just uh, normal humans using it. So there's a lot of traffic. There's currently like a, about 370 or 380 users or so. So pretty much everything that happens inside this network, um, it's basically being monitored and logged just like a normal workplace would be who has a security program. And the idea behind the threat hunt is I will like do something on the network that creates a, a trail of logs um, and then I'll, I'll kind of design a scenario and I'll explain the scenario to the community members and then like the rules and stuff and they go and kind of find the thing that they that they need to find in order to win. So, so I'll kind of explain everything. Um, I'll kind of read the scenario to you. Um, so this is like what the people participating in the threat hunt read and this is how they these are basically the clues that they used to kind of hunt for the indicators of compromise and then win if that makes sense and then after i do this i'll kind of go over their um i'll go over their report and then i'll query the logs and stuff to make sure everything's accurate and if you're interested in like getting into cybersecurity, um you know obviously feel free to join the cyber range and the the cyber community you have to be part of the cyber range to participate in the threat hunt and we'll be doing one like every week in order to actually like do the hunt and be proficient in it you would have to have finished like the threat hunting security operations and incident response course where it talks about like how to use the edr platform um, how oh, someone just bought it how to use the EDR platform how to like uh, query for logs and like do all of that stuff you have to like know how to do that in order to like participate in the the weekly challenge but um, yeah you can if you want to just like you know don't join and start asking me like how to threat hunt just like go through the module and you can DM me at any time of course but I just want to like you know say that but anyway this is the this is basically how it works. Um, I give the students or the members this URL, and then they go to the URL, and then it will like spell out the threat hunt scenario for them. So, um, I'll just read it. Um, a lot of this, some of this, like the verbiage was generated by ChatGPT because like I don't want to spend time like writing the story, but all the actual actions and stuff was performed by me, and like the code and everything on the back end was like all me. But okay, so the threat hunt scenario. This is what you'll read basically when you when you're about to do the hunt. So recent reports reveal a newly discovered APT group known as Jackal Spear originating from South Africa and occasionally operating in Egypt. This group has been targeting large corporations using spear phishing campaigns and credential stuffing attacks. You can Google what those are, uh, it's important. Um, by exploiting stolen credentials, they can gain access to systems with minimal logon attempts. So they can brute force into systems without having to try too many times because they're using password stuffing. Their primary targets are executives. Once they successfully compromise an account, they establish persistence by creating a secondary account on the same system with a similar username. This new account is then used to exfiltrate sensitive data while avoiding detection. Your mission as a threat hunter, like this is what you need to do to 
to win the challenge. Management has tasked you with identifying indicators of compromise related to the South African Egyptian APT within our systems. If you find any indicators of compromise, conduct a thorough investigation to track the attacker's movements and piece together their tactics, techniques, and procedures until you've quote unquote solved the challenge. The final step, once you've completed your hunt, present the flag to the community to claim your reward. Good luck. Getting started, your first task is to discover and submit the name of the host within the cyber range that was compromised by the APT. So getting started, your first task is to discover is to discover and submit the name of the host within the cyber range that was compromised by the APT. Submit your answer using this format. So basically, they have to copy this link, but at the very end of the link, you enter the host name that you found to be compromised in the web browser. And then if it's correct, it will kind of tell you the next step. And surprisingly enough, the first person to do this, Stephen Cruz, he, he solved the whole thing in like maybe three hours and then wrote up the report and then just went to bed. I was really surprised by that. But anyway, I'm going to go through his report and then we're going to kind of like query the logs to make sure that um, what he did is accurate. So I'm gonna log into uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. This is our endpoint detection and response thing um, where we can do threat hunting. And then we can like basically look at all the logs for like everything in the cyber range, like all the virtual machines, all the failed logons. We can, we can look at logs for like everything in here. And I'm gonna kind of uh, go through um, this is his threat hunt report. It kind of outlines his thought process and how he, he went through with like finding all the indicators of compromise and everything. So as a recall, the first thing we need to find out is what was the, um, your first task is to discover and submit the name of the host within the cyber range that was compromised by the AP. So there's a lot of ways to figure this out, but I'm just gonna like read what he did and see if we can like reverse engineer it. So basically Steven, um, he identified the compromised device, to start the investigation, I searched in the device process events table for evidence of suspicious user account creation. So if you don't know, inside of Defender for Endpoint, or like I guess probably any EDR solution, there's a lot of different tables that hold um, the different logs for stuff that happened in the environment. So for example, like device logon events table holds um, all the different logons that happened, like whether somebody failed to log in or succeeded to log in, et cetera. All those logs are in this table and we can kind of see like a, a preview of it. So these are this is an, an example of like um, a log for some kind of logon activity. So Steven Singh, he searched the device process events table. We can just kind of see what's in here. Um, for evidence of suspicious user account creation. So inside of here, you can see like different uh, PowerShell commands and like pretty much any anytime somebody opens something or like runs a command will show up in here. So he's saying he looked in the device process events table for um, anything, for any indication that attacker um, created a new local user on the system. And he said he used this query. So he probably um, he probably either used ChatGPT or he just searched on Google, like what is the PowerShell command for creating a new user, I'm assuming. Um, and he said the query revealed that on the device CorpNet1, a new local user named Chadwick.s was created using the PowerShell command. So I can copy this command he used and paste it and I can run it and see like what comes out. And then sure enough, inside of the device process events table, where the process command line contained this text new local user and there was one record and it came out so if we look at this this is like the process command line so it looks like we can actually expand this and it looks like this command was ran on that computer on the computer corpnet one dash ny and you can see like the name of the account that was created. This is in line with what he said in his report. Added to the admins group. So this is accurate so far. Once they successfully compromise an account, they establish persistence by creating a secondary account with a similar username. So this is potentially like what's happening. The first step was to submit the name of the host that was compromised by the APT by using this URL and then putting the name of the host at the end of it. So basically what he did, copy this, paste it, and then he found corpnet-1-ny, so corpnet-1-ny, and say enter. 
and then that is correct. The next thing that I tasked people with was trying to figure out the actual attacker's public IP address, but it looks like he actually, instead of like trying to figure that out right away, um, it looks like he investigated the login attempts, and I think he can f you can find that public IP address from here. So next, uh, he says, I examined the device logon events table to determine the method and timing of the compromise. The attacker attempted to log into the compromise machine 14 times unsuccessfully before finally succeeding. Uh, this was followed shortly by the creation of the chadwick.s account. So this happened before this happened up here. The series of failed logon attempts is consistent with a credential stuffing attack. So he basically like used this query to see all of the failed logon attempts from Chadwick S and then 14 in a row, then somebody finally logged in afterwards. So credential stuffing is basically you, you have a list of known passwords that a user uses and you keep trying those passwords that they've used in the past. And the idea is um, you're able to like crack the password way faster because it's a known password. So this Chadwick S person tried to log in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen failures, and then they finally logged in successfully on the fifteenth time, which is what he's talking about here. And by the way, he didn't mention this in his report, but I, you remember the, the APT is from like either South Africa or Egypt. Um, if we look at these Chadwick S logins, the failures, if we click the IP address, this was like part of the hint the Defender for Endpoint will geolocate it for us and we can see the region is in South Africa. So that's like a good indicator that it's the actual, like the bad actor, right? And then finally, analyzing a file events. Um, to understand the extent of the data compromise, I searched the device file events table for actions initiated by the attacker under the new user account Chadwick S, which is smart. So he, he lo he's looking in the device file events table for anything that the new user, the attacker created did. I discovered that the attacker accessed and likely stole a sensitive file named this alongside other files uh, in a zip file named this, um, a high value target that could indicate larger espionage operation targeting user proprietary research. So if we take his query, basically he's saying that he, he, looked, he, he looked in the uh, device file events table for any kind of file activity that was done on the target computer that was compromised by the actual uh, new user account that was created by the hacker. And he found a couple of things, two activities. So remember, whenever you do anything on the computer, it's like basically logged by the EDR platform. And he found this command that was run, 7-zip, and then a bunch of stuff here. He basically looked um, for anything where the file name had the word zip in it because like, it's common to like zip stuff up or like archive stuff if you're trying to like s steal it or use steganography. I'm sure he like tried a bunch of other stuff as well, but um, he ended up finding what he was looking for with this query probably. And this is this initiating process command line. This is actually like 7-zip, a command line of 7-zip zipping up a bunch of like corporate intellectual property. So you can like right click this and say like copy value to clipboard for example. And you can go to ChatGPT and you can say like, what exactly is going on here? And it will tell you like 7-zip is a utility for compressing stuff, blah, blah, blah. It's making this and it's basically like telling you everything that's happening. What's likely happening is a bunch of files are, are being archived or like zipped up essentially. And then basically he, he found enough information to like uh, essentially solve the solve the puzzle. So for example, if you remember, um, after we entered like the host name of the thing that was compromised, the next question is, you know, what is the public IP address of the attacker? So you just take this, paste it here, and then he, he found it out, which is this. So enter the attacker's IP address, and then it kind of lets you go to the next step. How many logins did it take uh, before the attacker successfully logged into the, into the compromised machine? So to answer that, you just do the same thing. He found that it was 14, so enter 14. And the next question is, what account did the attacker create on the local machine? So he figured it out. This was the account that was created, chadwick.s. So to answer it, just copy this, paste it, chadwick.s. 
And then the next question is name one of the files that was likely stolen by the attacker while well, logged into the account. So he actually found that as well. He found all of them. So this is one of them. So take this. And then same thing, stolen file, and you paste it. And then once you paste this, correct, uh, you solve the challenge and here's your secret code and your flag as proof. And then once you have this, all you have to do is basically like uh, copy this URL, paste it, and then put your email in here. And then once you do this, it will record your winnings and then uh, I can just see it on the back end. So for example, it basically just gets logged, you know, in the Azure function like web application logs. And then uh, I can see all of the winners here um, with their like email address and their code and stuff. And then this way it kind of provides non repudiate non repudiation. Is that correct? Um, where it's actually in the logs and I can see like real time what time like everybody completed the challenge. But yeah, that's the first threat hunt. Uh, I'm probably going to make like more rules around it and probably make it slightly more difficult. Um, if you're interested, just sign up for the cyber range. And then uh, if you're really interested in doing the threat hunt, just after you sign up, just um, of course, like go through like the intro module, but um, just finish the threat hunting and security operations uh, section as soon as you can and get really good at KQL and then join next week's threat hunt. But yeah, Hopefully see you there. Um, I'm interested in any, hearing any kind of feedback or anything like that. But yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the, in the next video.